Chapter 1. The Enlightenment Ideals of Reason, Science, Humanism, and Progress Can Improve Human Lives. A lot of people have the wrong knowledge and mindset about the situation of the world. They believe that the world is in terrible shape. Their worldview is centered on humans trapped in poverty, flawed educational systems, crimes, etc. Having observed this, Steven Pinker provides a different understanding of the world focused on Enlightenment ideals. These ideals are reason, science, humanism, and progress, which have led to the rise of health, prosperity, safety, peace, and happiness worldwide. In a public lecture, a student asked Steven Pinker the reason for living. The tone of the question didn't suggest that the student was suicidal or sarcastic. She was actually genuinely looking for the meaning and purpose of life. The answer Steven Pinker gave the student was the ideals of enlightenment, the Enlightenment Principle uses reason and sympathy to improve human existence. We need to defend reason, science, humanism, and progress like never before. Compared with what is propagated in the media, the world is getting better because humans live longer and healthier on average than before. Many good things happen in the world today that most people don't know. For example, the world is becoming more equal. Poor people are getting wealth and benefits from the emergence of technology. In addition, many people are currently advocating for equal rights. This was not the case centuries ago. In this summary, you will be exposed to the ideals of enlightenment and how they can be defended in the 21st century. In addition, you will be informed on what is going on around you that the media does not publicize. The ideals of the Enlightenment are products of human reason, but they always struggle with other strands of human nature, loyalty to tribe, deference to authority, magical thinking, the blaming of misfortune on evildoers. Stephen Pinker Chapter 2. Enlightenment Answers the Question, Why Are We Alive? Philosopher Immanuel Kant defines enlightenment as humans coming out of selflessness obtained from immaturity and its submission to beliefs of religious and governmental authorities. He sees enlightenment's basis as freedom of thought and speech, and its motto is, Dare to Understand. The only way to make progress is by daring to understand science, morality, politics, and more. There will always be problems, as failure is due to insufficient knowledge, and problems arise when knowledge does not suffice. The way forward is, therefore, a search for knowledge and attempting to understand. It is only when we think and put in the effort to understand all the phenomena in our world that we can move forward. When someone fails at something, it is because they did not have enough knowledge on how to win. This failure then becomes a problem as there is not enough knowledge to beat the issue. Therefore, problems arise only when knowledge does not suffice. Enlightenment is a constant search for a new understanding of the human condition. The four themes of enlightenment are Reason implores us to apply reason to our understanding of the world instead of simply going ahead with what has been generations of dogma, mysticism, divination, sacred texts, or authority. Science provides an escape from ignorance and superstition and sets an empirical paradigm of achieving reliable knowledge. This knowledge involves understanding ourselves. Humanism seeks to place more importance on the well-being of individual men, women, and children over the glory of the tribe, race, nation, or religion. Progress is the understanding of the world from a scientific standpoint and a level of sympathy increased through reason and humanity that leads to intellectual and moral progress. Enlightenment hope for progress is focused on institutions rather than shaping human nature. The common sense of the 18th century, its grasp of the obvious facts of human suffering and the apparent demands of human nature, acted on the world like a bath of moral cleansing. Alfred North Whitehead, Chapter 3 Entropy, Evolution, and Information are the three keys necessary to understanding the human condition. Entropy means disorder, and it is the first key to understanding the human condition. 
human existence and pleasure are tied to a microscopic level of orderly arrangements, although there are enormous possibilities in the world. So, when humans experience changes that they did not instigate, they know that such change will happen for the worse. Hence, one of the things we seek to do is to use energy and knowledge to prevent natural entropy and make beneficial order to live within. There are constant disorders in the world. Our duty is to fight to make controlled environments we can thrive in. Evolution is the second key to understanding the human condition. For the longest time, Enlightenment thinkers were deists instead of atheists, as students of everything around them showed what seemed to be meticulous design and building. Thus, the thought of a god or a creating hand was necessary. However, naturalists like Charles Darwin and Russell Wallace made the creator an unnecessary factor after proving evolution. Evolution proves that one reason for life is to adapt and move around hurdles we face in our existence to make sure that we survive. If we cannot change the environment and make it conducive for us, we can change ourselves to become stronger than the environment. Information is the third key. It differentiates order and structured systems from the many random and useless ones in natural existence. It is information that makes evolution possible. It is collected by a living thing during the course of its life, and it is what gets accumulated in the genome that transfers to the next cycle of life to reconfigure it to adapt to its surroundings. Information is one of the reasons for life. We live to learn, not just for things that we will use in the course of our lives, but for the next biological cycle after us. We are to be the vessels of information for life all around us and the life to come. Entropy, evolution, and information are the concepts that define the narrative of our progress as humans. They show the natural tragedy we were born into and how we make a better existence for ourselves. Chapter 4 We should be grateful for all our progress instead of ignoring it. There is still a lot that we don't know, a lot that we are yet to do, and a lot that we still fail at as a species. But in truth, humans have come a long way. The average intellectual detests progress. They like the fruits of progress, such as getting on a plane to go halfway around the world instead of getting on a horse or camel and traveling for weeks or months. They enjoy sending a text message to their counterparts across the globe instead of waiting to have their letters delivered. However, what these intellectuals don't like is the idea of progress. They are upset when they hear Enlightenment thinkers saying that understanding our world would improve the human condition. They look upon Enlightenment views with scorn, calling it blind faith or a quasi-religious belief. Several intellectuals choose to enjoy the benefits of humanity's progress, such as good medicine and quick transportation. However, they refuse to acknowledge that, although we still have a long way to go, we have already accomplished a lot. Progress, no matter how little, should not be disregarded. If all you choose to see in this world is negativity, you will not progress or grow. The media carries more bad news than good news, but this is not always for lack of good news. It is simply the negativity bias in our intellectual culture. We have been trained to be vigilant for bad things, so the information market has taken it upon itself to constantly call our attention to bad things we have missed. Many bad things happen in the world, but there is no reason to completely ignore the good. You cannot grow when you continue to focus on only the bad. However, this is not truly the case. In the constant entropy, we are here to collect information and evolve. This is the Enlightenment belief. Those who see the world as a lost cause are not inclined to do anything to save it. Chapter 5 The state of the world now shows both good and bad progress, and it is up to us to determine where we end up. The world is certainly not where it was when Enlightenment thinking was born in the late 18th century. Compared to two centuries ago, life expectancy rates have gone up from 30 to 71, according to research carried out by Cunningham et al. in 2017. 
The world is giving peace a chance, having fewer people dying in battles and wars as there are fewer wars today, both within countries and between. According to an article published by Max Roser and Esteban Ortiz Ospina in 2013, the people of the world are becoming more literate. In the early 19th century, only 12% of the world could read and write. Today, 86% can. Stop focusing on what the media feeds you. Look around you and appreciate the good you see. These pieces of research have all showed precisely how much enlightenment has helped us grow and made us better. A few of the less pleasant developments in our world today are a dozen wars are raging in the world, and even peaceful countries have thousands of nuclear weapons at the ready, despite the absence of wars. Five million people die in accidents each year, and more than 400,000 are murdered. Global temperatures are rising as tons of carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, and more are spewed into the atmosphere. Marine life has declined by almost 40%, and thousands of species are threatened with extinction. These are the adverse developments we have seen in more recent times, and although they receive a lot more media attention than the positive, they are in no way as overwhelming as they seem. We have already come so far, and it is only a matter of time before we conquer these problems. After that, it is up to us to choose the way forward. We can choose to focus on the negative as society has cultured us to do, but that would simply leave us wallowing and complaining. However, choosing to focus on the good and becoming inspired to remedy the bad will take mankind to the next step. Chapter 6 Equal rights are a result of enlightenment and show how proper reason and understanding can help the world progress. The fight for equal rights has been on for ages and is only now becoming truly mainstream. It is freedom from both racism and misogyny. Now all people, regardless of race or gender, have the same opportunities available to them. This new development led to higher numbers of educated people and lower numbers of poor people. It has bettered the world as a whole now that everyone is on a level playing ground, and we work together to achieve goals instead of spending time oppressing each other. It was reason and understanding that led to the conclusion that no one should be held back and everyone should get a fighting chance. Enlightenment has opened people's eyes to make them turn from their barbaric ways and support equal rights. Progress in equal rights has been seen in data on human lives. For example, in research conducted by Deaton in 2013, poverty declined from 55% in 1960 to 27.6% in 2011 among African Americans. In addition, according to the United States Department of Labor in 2016, women make up 47% of the labor force and a majority of university students. Although there are still several occurrences of racism and misogyny, and they should no longer exist, we have come a long way from how bad things used to be. This progress is proof that we can do even better. Children the world over have become better off. They are less likely to enter the world motherless, die before their fifth birthday, or grow up stunted for lack of food. Steven Pinker Did you know? According to the Penn Research Center 2020, 77% of American adults pointed to sexual harassment as a significant obstacle to women having equal rights with men. Chapter 7 Reason, Science, and Humanism as the Ideals of Enlightenment Reason is not something we believe in, it's something we use. Many oppose reason, choosing to favor the heart over the head. They claim that reason is just a pretext to the exertion of power, and what is seen as reality is socially constructed. Many try to dismiss the place of reason in enlightenment, but it is possible. You cannot negate the importance of reason in the human condition. We must continue to fight for the Enlightenment ideal of finding reason and truth. This is what enables us to step back, consider our shortcomings, and find ways to work around them. Reason requires people to think and figure out new ways to do things or understand why the old ways were faulty. Science is one of the proudest accomplishments of mankind. 
We have been able to explain the history of our universe, the forces that control it, what we are made of, and how we came to be, and the machinations of our bodies and minds. We have been able to take apart, study, and understand. Although there still is a lot that we don't know yet, the levels of knowledge we have attained are astounding. For us, science is constantly growing. We continue to learn and fill in all of the spaces in our understanding. Science is the road to the truth that reason seeks. Science is where the tests are carried out and where conclusions are drawn. From those conclusions, we can reason out the answer to our problems. Science is the spirit of enlightenment. Humanism is the final ideal that ties everything together to form true enlightenment. Reason gives us thought, but there can also be evil thoughts. Science gave us understanding, but this understanding has allowed us to create some of the most terrible weapons. Humanism focuses on the welfare of humankind and everything around it. It tapers our reasoning to make sure our thoughts are good and not evil. It keeps us from using our understanding without restraint and doing as we see fit, and it keeps us progressing on the excellent path. Of course, we will never have a perfect world, and it would be dangerous to seek one. However, there is no limit to the good we can attain if we continue to apply knowledge to enhance human flourishing. Conclusion in the lifelong quest for why we exist, enlightenment is the only answer that one can find to be valid. We have been brought into existence to flourish. We are here to reason, fight the constant state of entropy, and make a place for ourselves with science, or evolve and adapt to what we are faced with. We are to collect information to be passed on to the next cycle of life, and in all our doings, we are to care for all of humanity and try to make life better for all. We must learn to be grateful for our progress through everything that life throws at us, no matter how much still needs to be done. This will keep us optimistic and help us to keep moving forward. It has taken years to achieve what we have, creating equal rights in gender, race, and sexuality, but there is still a lot to do. However, we should focus on the good and look at our progress and draw the strength to keep fighting from it. As long as we have reason, science, and humanism working hand in hand to guide us, we can be sure that we are on the right path. Although we still have a lot of inequality in our world today, when it comes to human progress, it's not fundamental. This is because when it comes to our well being, Inequality can't be compared to health, prosperity, knowledge, safety, and peace. So many good things happen around us daily. We need to start being grateful for our progress. Try this. Get a notepad. You can use the notepad on your phone or a laptop. Do away with watching the news for a week. Go about with your notepad and write anything good that happens in your life and the lives of those around you for one week.